Thank you very much for this introduction, Greg. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. Um, and the person you see on my slide is Masako Wakamiya. She is an app developer. She was born in 1935 and built her very first app when she was 82. And on the right, you see this app. It's called Hinadan. And for uh, Japanese uh, members in the audience, I need to apologize for my pronunciation. But this is essentially a game which is uh, training kids to prepare an altar for girls festival called Hin Hinamatsuri. And you need to put those dolls in the right places. So she's of course exceptional. But there are quite some uh, older software developers who are around. And previous studies uh, have shown that the programmer reputation scores on Stack Overflow tends to increase well into the 50s. And there is no strong correlation between age and scores in specific knowledge areas. So this would essentially suggest that older software developers should thrive in our world. But at the same time, Quora is full of questions. I am so many years, and am I too old to become a programmer? And those questions are coming from people who are 50, who are 60, but also people who are 15. So what is going on? We try to understand, together with Sebastian Baldus and George Park, how exactly this public discourse uh, surrounding age and software developers is organized. What are people talking about and what kind of things they associate with being old in software development? So we have analyzed um, articles. Uh, so essentially, we have looked at top 100 hits. Um, we looked at Google, age and software developer. We focused on English-based sources and uh, US-based locations because, of course, uh, age-related expectations are culturally determined. We excluded uh, things which are merely job ads and collections of statistics, and we found 24 articles published on news sites, published on popular blog platforms. So you see a couple of those examples, and we have manually analyzed those texts. So the first question for us was, how old is actually old? And here I have bad news for many of us, including myself. So I'm old. I have passed the boundary of 40. Uh, so I'm considered to be old. Uh, and if you see that even if the upper boundary from this table, uh, like 50 or older, is by far nowhere near to the retirement age in the Western countries. Uh, some documents even refer to people in their 30s as being old. So essentially, old is very young in software development. So when we looked closer at what those articles are essentially talking about, then it turned out that employability is a major concern. Uh, people are worried about their ability to continue their professional careers, to find new jobs and so on. And we have cross-checked those articles with a more popular opinion on Hacker News. So what we have found is that there are many strategies which are being recommended both for companies and for individuals when it comes to uh, ensuring their employ employ employability of older software developers. For example, companies can offer returnships, uh, which are often being mentioned in context of uh, parental leaves but essentially can be used for any kind of uh, extended uh, career breaks uh, or provide career tracks and KPIs, which would be tailored towards experienced developers. At the same time, companies should stop doing certain things which are negatively affecting uh, older developers. For example, uh, if you are uh, asking um, as, in, as part of your interview process, uh, to solve classical puzzles from the algorithms book or from the data structures book from a first year uh, university education, then of course you are going to uh, disadvantage people who might not have followed the traditional path or might not might have just followed those uh, traditional paths many, many years ago, which was of course the case for people we've been focusing on. Um, framing uh, technological experience as technology baggage uh, is discouraging and worrisome. 
At the level of the individuals, we see that uh, these people are trying to grow as software engineers, for example, by mastering modern technologies or uh, developing mentorship skills or becoming uh, and getting knowledge of specific niche technologies. But those techniques can be seen as problematic because even if your technology uh, knowledge is being appreciated, the social context might be a problem, pushing some of the older individuals to adopt strategies which are aiming at appearing young. For example, modifying CV by hiding some of the previous employment, uh, working over time, which is mostly associated, not adopted for people who having other obligations or even going to plastic surgery. So based on this study, we have seen techniques that both companies and individuals can employ to encourage or discourage older software developers from continuous, from being employed in companies. In a follow-up study, we have looked at more specific sample of older developers, specifically at women. Remember Masako Wakamiya? She was in her 80s. She was um, uh, developing an app. We know from the literature and from our own experience that women are minoritized group in software development. And as our previous study has shown, so are all the developers. And in general, uh, people who are on the intersection of multiple diversity axes tend to experience challenges which cannot be attributed to a single one of them. So this is why we have conducted a series of interview studies. So you see here a general overview of experiences of uh, older women. And again, older in this case means 40 plus. The strategies they use to survive uh, and their general perceptions. So this is, of course, a full-blown paper. And today, I would like to focus solely on strategies because I would like to be it as practical as possible. And specifically, when we see it, strategies that help women to survive in this uh, hostile or at least unfriendly environment, uh, we see age-related strategies, such as um, adjusting behavior or adjusting looks. We have already seen some of those issues before. Um, Strategies which are related to gender, uh, ranging from uh, don't taking things personally or uh, baking other women, to strategies which are trying to combine age or gender, because again, we know that uh, strategies are not always easily attributed to a single of those dimensions. And here you see uh, two recommendations we have um, distilled from our interviews. For example, trying to help the next generation of women and non-binary people, uh, and uh, of course, also benefiting from the networks. So summarizing, what have we seen? We have seen that um, both organizations and individuals uh, should and can invest in creating more welcoming environment for all the developers in general and for uh, veteran women developers in particular. Of course, it is a matter of uh, common knowledge by now uh, that diversity can bring more creative solutions and can uh, create more productive teams. But specifically when we are talking about minoritized groups, uh, specifically when we are talking about uh, groups which are so scarce as older women and non-binary people in software development, um, their inclusion uh, allows us to approach needs of the uh, underserved groups in the society as a whole. Uh, examples of this kind of adjustments are, of course, changes in the interview process, uh, offering returnships, including uh, uh, K KPIs or including uh, statements which would be referred reflect that contributions of those people are valued and are important for the company. When it comes to individual developers, then of course we have uh, quite a number of challenges there because we see people changing, challenging their environments or changing their environments. Um, either for example, through things like unionization, standing up against biases or simply by changing companies, roles or sometimes locations. 
Uh, we also see many much more problematic techniques and strategies, such as uh, adopting useful patterns of behavior, uh, changing uh, looks, uh, changing, um, uh, sorry, okay, changing uh, how people uh, behave and how people look. Uh, but of course, at the same time, um, we know that those are merely um, band aid solutions, uh, while of course the problems uh, are sometimes, uh, or at least most of them are systemic. And I apologize, something happened to my screen and I'm not sure what exactly you are seeing. We are seeing you at the moment, the screen share has ended. Uh Okay. We've got we've got time. If you've got another slide or two and would like to try to reshare your screen, that should work. Okay. Let me just try to reshare it. Sure. Yep, we're seeing your screen but not your slides. Okay. So now you need to see the slides. Yes. And now we're seeing the slides. Thank you. Yes, so that's essentially the slide, yes. Uh, so as I said, right, so we have uh, strategies and solutions which can help people uh, and we can help um, uh, both companies and both companies and individuals uh, should uh, be engaged in this process. And now I can actually stop sharing. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry for the technical hiccup there. Um, Great talk. Thank you, Alexander. A uh, question coming in from the audience. How is all of this going to play out with the demographic shift we're seeing, for example, in Japan and parts of Europe as we have an aging population? Do you think that this sort of discrimination is going to be reduced? I would love to say yes, but um, I don't really see it happen. Um, our study has, of course, focused on um, the US-based labor market, which is more hot, more active than what at least I see here in Europe. Uh, and it probably should not make any comments about the Japanese labor market. Um, I'm mostly worried uh, that, um, like the problems we see are mostly related to changing employment. Uh, if people are sticking around for the same companies, they might be suffering, but they will still around, so we are not going to see it. The problems which came out were mostly related to uh, finding companies, being hired by those companies, and so on. If the market is not that active, people are not uh, likely to change their employment. So we might have other forms of discrimination rather than the one we have seen, but it will be very bold for me to claim that uh, we are not going to have any forms of discrimination. Okay. Uh, another, another comment that came up or question. Um, you mentioned changing appearance. Um, how common is that in the tech sector? And how often are you seeing people taking advantage of remote work to try to play down or even conceal their age? So, as a scientist, I should say that both studies were uh, qualitative, so I cannot answer questions on the quantitative side. I don't know how often it happens, uh, but it has been repeatedly mentioned at the very least. So our interviewees are repeatedly mentioning changing their appearance, either to appear younger or on the other side to not appear younger. So most of the time when we are talking about changing appearance, we are thinking about trying to appear younger. Some people are not trying to appear younger. In particular, this was one of the topics which was related to our interviews with uh, women. I can maybe quote one of the uh, interviewees. She said that uh, all those young tech bros, they don't like to work with their mom, but they are, perfectly happy working with their grandmother. So this age, you know, it has a very strange relationship with what makes you of the right age. 
Mm -hmm. Women are often seen as never being a right. Either too young and not taken serious because they're too young, or they're too old and not taken serious because their knowledge is outdated. Right? So this is it's a tightrope. Mm -hmm. 